Welcome to On the Table, a podcast about board games, card games, and tabletop war games. Hey, it's Chase from On the Table Gaming, and welcome back. Uh, so this is actually our second take of this episode. I had a little bit of a tech problem earlier, so I'm really excited to get into this content. Uh, so we're social distancing over here. We can't wait to get back into playing A Song of Ice and Fire, the Avengers game. But today we're going to take a slightly different approach, and we're going to be looking at the hobby, not necessarily at the miniatures on the table, but examining some of the benefits of tabletop gaming that might not always get as much focus in more typical times. So we're going to be talking about gaming and mental health. And to do that, I'm joined uh, by Gabrielle Arroyo, a licensed marriage and family therapist at Soaring Families Counseling in Southern California. Gabriel, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. <laughs> Part two, part two here. We're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a really great YouTube channel, um, Soaring Families Counseling, and you had a video that was being passed around talking about playing board games for mental health. And we're going to link that in the show notes for those of you who haven't seen it yet. But you mentioned a few tabletop war games, things like Star Wars Legion and, and Marvel Crisis Portal call, call come up. And you, you kind of link that to mental health. So I'm really excited to explore this topic with you. But before we do that, maybe we could just jump in and talk a little bit like, how have you kind of found your way to gaming and what's like your gaming background and experience? I mean, what sort of road have you traveled to get here? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, you know, um, so I, I've grown up all my life playing board games with just various types of games, um, just kind of as a an overall hobby and kind of coping skill. And then, you know, from my uh, YouTube channel with Soaring Families Counseling, that's kind of what the YouTube channel is all about is, is just providing coping skills that I think that everybody could utilize and are, are a little bit more easily accessible. So with my experience of playing board games and then leading into tabletop games, I just noticed like, hey, yeah, this is something fun that could definitely be used as a coping skill. Um, and that that's how I ended up making the video. But as far as like tabletop war gaming type games, I started, uh, I want to say about two years ago. So as soon as Star Wars Legion was announced, like I'm a big toy collector, so I, <laughs> I, I love Star Wars. Um, so as soon as I found out about like the miniatures and, and that part of the hobby with the gaming, that instantly got me hooked. So like, That's I, how I, I knew your video was legit though. And you're like <laughs> talking about David and you had like 3D printed terrain and like your stuff. Yeah. Painted up, and I was like, whoa, like this guy, one of us. Yeah. 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 Like, you know, I, I love this. I've been doing modeling uh, since I was a kid and I, I just kind of like love building and, and essentially just going all in the things. And then I had that collector part of me. So, <laughs> you know, I, as you can see in my video or, or in my thumbnail, like I have both factions uh, from the original core set. Um, well, on and additions and additions and additions. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I don't choose a faction. I do everything so like I, I really love the collecting element so i have every single piece uh to date that exists for star wars legion um and and uh, yeah and, and that's that's kind of how i am with all the games that i buy people um, are gonna be so listening I, along like <laughs> nodding their heads like yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so with marvel crisis protocol which is you know the other ip that i absolutely love like i um, I got into this this type of gaming, you know, when Star Wars Legion came out, and you know, I, I would go to the store about once a once every two weeks, once a month at the very least to pick up everything. And then, so my fiance and then the store owner, we would always kind of talk. Like she t she would tell me like, "You're one of the only person that collects this level of amount of things <laughs> for this game." I'm like, "Yeah, you know, like I, I collect everything." And then we would talk about like all the other things I'm interested in, uh, like Marvel and Disney. And I, I would say like, in joke, like, oh my God, I'm going to be so screwed if they come out with a Marvel game like this or a Disney game. And, you know, shortly after they announced Marvel Crisis Protocol, and <laughs> <laughs> the, the store owner was a happy lady because uh, she's like, yeah, I'm going to get like putting their kids through college. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There are so many facets to, especially tabletop board gaming, you know, painting, collecting, assembling, but it, you know, there's so much fun to be had in all of that. And so I think, mm. you know, when you're talking about collecting, I mean, that definitely speaks to a part of the hobby that's like really exciting. Yeah. You know, I talk about like mindfulness a lot of just being all in and, and that's kind of the element that I love the most about this is every, every element within this game and hobby, we're practicing mindfulness and it is in 
coping skill we get to use. So, you know, when we talk about sort of mental health, there's some terms that you're kind of using here, like mindfulness, coping skills. Maybe we even start like at the very basic. When we, when we talk about mental health, kind of what are we talking about there, right? So if we say like physical mm-hmm. health and like taking care of your physical health, you might think of like diet, exercise. There may be like uh, genetic predispositions and things that come into that. Um, when we're talking about like the realm of mental health, you know, what are we, what are we really talking about and why is it maybe important to be thinking about, especially in a time like now? Mm, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a great question. You know, when we talk about mental health, there's unfortunately the stigma that people have about mental health, you know, automatically we're, we're starting to think like, Oh my gosh, does that mean I'm crazy or is there something wrong with me? And, and no, I don't believe that at all. You know, I think mental health is, is as essential as physical health. And, you know, I, I happen to have diabetes, I have type one diabetes, and that's what actually got me into the field of, of psychology and wanting to be a therapist. I was diagnosed when I was nine years old and being hospitalized and having that you know, experience. Um, I was provided a therapist to help me cope with all the changes in my life. And that's what you know struck a chord with me of saying, yeah, I really want to do this and help others. Uh, just once again, maintaining healthy mental health. Um, with just adequate coping skills and just having someone to talk to. So that's what got me into the field. But, you know, when we talk about mental health, at least the way that I look at it is, you know, th- there was nothing quote unquote wrong with me for utilizing therapy at that time in my life. That was something difficult that uh, I could never be prepared for, um, you know, facing the facts that I was going to take shots for the rest of my life and mm-hmm. I have to eat differently and, and physically I'm going to feel a lot differently, um, you know, that I would say that that was a normal reaction and experience for me with a very abnormal situation. So, you know, it helped me to overcome some depression, some anxiety, you know, some self doubt. And that's how it helped me. And that's how I look at mental health of, you know, the these are normal feelings that we have with abnormal situations. And In my YouTube channel, I I have a coping with COVID playlist right now, because this is like you you said, this is a very unprecedented time that no one could have been prepared for. And it, (laughs) you know, it's definitely affecting our mental health with feeling sad, anxious, angry, overwhelmed, whatever it may be, which are all our normal feelings for a very abnormal situation. The best thing about your videos is they're like very efficient and they get right to the point and uh, they're really accessible. So I, I don't know, I was just clicking through those and I was like, wow, these are like, I can understand these. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's the hopes. <laughs> and so it sounds like you're you know, kind of in a weird way, maybe we're talking about then segueing into these sort of skills, right? It sounds like you're mm-hmm. through this practice, then you are developing skills to better yourself, right? Whereas like you go to the gym and you, you know, maybe learn to do certain moves and you build certain skills so that you can get in shape and then do that on your own. Um, mm-hmm. You're kind of talking then about terms like coping and mindfulness. So what are, we, what are we talking about when we're getting into that? And maybe that's kind of like, it may be seeming like a very basic question, but just that maybe we're all on the same page. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a great question. I think it's a great question because once again, there's that stigma. So people really don't know. And, and then there's there's obviously going to be uh, a textbook answer, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then there's, there's a personality component to it. Whereas you know th- that's what I wanted my uh, my approach therapeutically and for the YouTube channel to be a little bit different is it's not a straight therapeutic approach. This is kind of very real. Like I'm using very real life scenarios and real life skills that anybody and everybody could use to put on the filter of like, okay, yeah, I am taking care of my mental health. So, you know, when it comes to coping skills, I define it um, as it just being anything that makes us feel better. So anything that makes us feel better with a caveat of it being a healthy activity and with safe and healthy moderation. So, you know, like the board games of, of how you met me and, and how you got linked with me, board games can be a healthy coping skill with safe and healthy moderation. It's something that um, we have a little bit of escapism and practicing the mindfulness, which by, by my definition and many others' definitions, it's just about being present moment focused, which if, you know, I assume all your listeners <laughs> practice and play tabletop gaming, they are experiencing that. We're all in and we're 
or we have this imagination and this fantasy component that we are being 100% invested and involved in while we're playing. And that's what it's all about is just getting us, I mean, essentially away from or, or redirecting some of those maybe negative feelings, negative thoughts, negative experiences to have some form of coping. I think that's something maybe people don't always think about, right? That's like the you kind of get into it because it's like, ooh, shiny. There's like, it's cool pushing miniatures around or painting things. But sometimes you forget that there are these other elements and opportunities like nested within it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sitting down and even just taking some time like every day just to paint and kind of like, you know, it is definitely a, a de-stressor and kind of like a, a way to kind of ground yourself and focus on and like just the immediate and forget about like what's going on on the news or, you know, what's going on down the street or, you know, the health concerns. For me, also a big part of gaming, though, is also community. And mm -hmm. uh, and also like a piece of it is like kind of mastery. I think especially with like content creation, like doing one thing that I know how to do and like getting better at it is like mm -hmm. become a big part of the hobby for me. And so it was really kind of interesting when, you know, we're still in the thick of it here, but, you know, when with COVID hit really hitting, suddenly kind of having like a chance to step back and reflect on like, well, what does the hobby mean to me? I think mm -hmm. that was kind of one of the more profound moments that I had where it's like, oh, like these are these sort of pillars. I can kind of see them more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love how you mentioned community because that's that's a big element that I mention in, in the videos and kind of what I mention in in therapy treatment and what I utilize it for is the community element of of bringing people together. You know, um, my my first experience going into a game store, I, I have a little bit of anxiety uh, of. I think just as everybody else does, we have that concern of like what people may think about us, uh, you know, possible judgments and me not being like an expert or pro gamer or pro painter. You know, I, I definitely had those thoughts of like the imposter syndrome of me going into the game store and playing with people that really knew their stuff. So I had a little bit of anxiety with that, but that was, that was des definitely uh, disputed. And I realized that that didn't exist in this community. Like I walked in and I was, you know, very warmly welcomed people like picked up on what I was wearing. I was wearing a star Wars shirt. At the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, they're asking me like, Hey, you know, like you're in a star Wars cool. Like, what are you all about? Like, here's some games. They put in the wall played. of Legion stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, here, yeah. Welcome home. <laughs> And, you know, the first game that I actually played with other people, other than my, my fiance and one of my close friends um, that, that we played together with, um, was Destiny. So I oh. played Star Wars Destiny. And, oh my gosh, like, I, I just, I could not keep up, like, <laughs> with deck building and, like, all the intricate rules that are constantly changing within that game. But, you know, once again, I'm a collector, so I absolutely love the game and I have every single set <laughs> for the game um but that that was very overwhelming to me but only in my own head right only in my own head was it overwhelming um because everybody that i was interacting with was so helpful so supportive and you know it was all about the community because i think everybody appreciates and realizes hey we we can't do this without other people so we definitely want to don't want to crap people out or, you know, not feel welcome. And it was super warm and welcoming with that experience. And I, I had a blast. And, you know, so now when I talk about uh, board gaming or, or tabletop gaming, I constantly go to that. Or is It's a community element that we get to interact with other people and build in our community, especially with, um, you know, I'm going to talk about another stigma, right? Uh, the stigma of people that do play these games right? We're, we're portrayed in such a negative way <laughs> in media, like uh, uh, cartoons and yeah. shows <laughs> that were these like basement dwelling weirdos. And, and that, that's not me or my, the experience <laughs> I've had with anybody that I've interacted with. Uh, with this community. I can't and, claim to not be a weirdo, but yeah. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. Yeah. But it's so funny because we had someone on like two episodes ago and they had just like, literally this is like the first game they got into and they've been playing for like a month or so. And they were like, oh, it's like nothing like I thought. Like my whole mm -hmm. life, there was a sort of like hierarchy of like not coolness. And he's like, this is actually yeah. really fun and cool. And it was like, yeah, yeah. but there was a, there's a stigma out there. I don't know. Exactly, exactly. And, and you know, if, if we were, 
if we were to say that there was any element that was real on that stigma, so okay, so if there if there is some difficulty with some individuals that are within this community that have a difficulty with maybe social anxiety, I think that this is the best format to overcome that because one, we we have a community that's in it for the same reasons we are, right? We're, we're there for the games, not mm-hmm. for judging people or, or making fun or, or anything negative. We're there to play the games and uh, share that common bond. And, and two, we get to dispute that, that that's not really what people think or care about. You know, so it's, it's a positive way to challenge those anxieties and kind of step out of our comfort level and actually join in with other people with something that we're passionate and love. Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, if people are for some reason listening to this, who maybe have not really got a chance to immerse themselves into gaming, although that is like primarily our audience, um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, once you go and you, you try it out and you, you kind of, yeah, there's a sort of I I think the stereotype is maybe more like media driven than in any other mm. thing. Like, and I guess, and on the flip side of this, maybe it's not the case. I'm I'm a high school teacher, and um, times have changed. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> Stranger Things and TV shows have like popularized. Like D and D is like huge, mm-hmm. and like that's what the mm-hmm. cool kids do. They talk about D and D, and I'm like, what is going on? It's like bizarre yeah. <laughs> world. Things have cha- flipped upside down. But maybe that's a good thing, I think, right? Where it's like things are being judged on the merit of how fun the activity is, not based on just like what this stereotype might be. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But, you know, I think that's, you know, speaking back to the idea of community too, it's just like for gaming, um, especially, I feel like this is an interesting one and that's sort of like a, not like a team sport metaphor, but like it's a, it's something that you do, you can only, it's it's the most fun when you do it with a group, but mm-hmm. if you're, but it's still something you can do privately, like you can paint, you can do these things and have like moments of inflection and reflection and mindfulness. And then you can like kind of rejoin the larger group and, you know, play with your cool painted minis or assemble things and share in these moments of like fun and laughter. So I don't know. It's kind of like almost encapsulates everything. Yeah. Yeah. You you mentioned mastery earlier and, yeah. and I wanted to touch base on that again it is yet. Yeah, Cause I'm actually sitting in the, in the room where I have all my miniatures on display. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, lo- looking at it, it does, it, it's another layer of coping. It does provide that mastery. And that's something that you could either do individually or share with others. You know, what I love about these Facebook groups and these Discord groups is like, I'm constantly seeing people post up new pictures of like their paintwork. And, and I'm just so amazed of like the positive responses that happen within these groups. Because, you know, I've been in a lot of social groups where whatever it may be, and there's always going to be those haters. <laughs> and, you know, I've luckily have not seen that within the groups that I've been in with, you know, this particular hobby. And I love it. Like everybody's just so positive and assuring and, and reinforcing positive vibes with the mastery component of it. Like th- this is all very unique of how people are customizing their paint schemes or, or maybe they're going for the Canon version of it. Um, it, but everybody's just so positive about it. And once again, it could be the individual or the group component of it. But I think that mastery, it definitely, it's going to release those endorphins, make us feel good. It's something that we can reflect on and be like, oh man, you know, I created this and I did this. And this is something I'm proud of and I feel good about, which is another layer of that healthy coping. Absolutely. And I would be remiss if I didn't try to proselytize here a little bit. Uh, so we cover a lot of content for a Song of Ice and Fire, the miniatures game. I'm a huge Star Wars Legion player. I love that game as well. Uh, I'm trying to find a way to convince myself to slow down on purchasing units and factions <laughs> uh, because I was like, I really only really want to play one competitively. And then I was like, somehow I woke up and I have like all the factions. <laughs> but for a Song of Ice and Fire, the miniatures game, it's a, it's a great gateway game in that it doesn't require assembly. So they're, they're single mold mm. miniatures and you can just, you know, play them painted or not. It's up to you. And so it's like mm. a really great starting point to get people into the hobby. And uh, so I'll just you know, throw that out there as a plug for you. You know, it's like if you ever looking for another game, it's maybe one to look at. And, and it's, a, it's just great because you can see mastery because the, the entry to bearer is so low that you can easily then be like, okay, I, actually, I do want to paint these. And like, that's going to be my first baby step. Although actually, that's something great about Star Wars Legion as well. If you get the original core box, 
it's very beginner friendly for like assembly. Whereas mm. maybe the Clone Wars the droids are a oh, little bit more oh involved. <laughs> I felt like I was like, I was like, I'm pretty good at assembling stuff. And like that was trying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, these these opportunities to to develop mastery, these are these are great games for that. People may be listening to this, um, maybe in various stages of their life in dealing with mental health. Uh, and maybe this is a new topic to them. Maybe they are uh, getting professional assistance and help, uh, you know, kind of like you'd be getting a physical trainer to, to improve yourself physically, you know, uh, seeing a therapist or getting counseling. Um, but, you know, there might be people listening that, uh, you know, aren't in a great spot, right? Because this has like, mm -hmm. you know, upthrown and, 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 and disrupted communities that people are a part of. Um, you know, there are other stressors now that are in addition to life. And I know talking to a lot of people like either, you know, with jobs, you know, unemployment or their jobs changing maybe in the way it's done, but maybe increasing, like decreasing the amount of time, but increasing the amount of work that needs to be done. Mm. And things are just very upending. So, you know, what, uh, any advice for people who maybe are feeling like they are maybe over their head, you know, how can they maybe approach improving their mental health? um you know maybe in general yeah yeah definitely you know um I, I think my philosophy is anyone and everyone can benefit from mental health treatment right so you know as as a therapist i think that my approach is, is very is very authentic and genuine to who i am as a person i happen to be a therapist and, and you know i follow my regulations as a therapist but um, as I'm talking now, this is kind of how you could assume I would talk in a session. Like I'll ask the questions I have to and, and hit the points that I have to, but I, I'm just a normal person. And, <laughs> you know, many of the therapists in the world are like that. So I think that overcoming that stigma of what mental health is and, and receiving mental health treatment is, is step one. And then just going for it, it, just talking to somebody. I think talking to somebody will just help you. And if you're not at that level to where you feel like you could go to a professional, just use, using your social support, your friends, your family, loved ones, whoever you feel comfortable talking with to just get things out in the open and just process some things. And then, of course, if you're at a, a higher level of need, um, safety. Safety is absolutely the most essential part of it. Uh, you know, if you're having thoughts of suicide or, or not living, um, definitely following up with emergency services. Everybody's here to help and make sure that um, you are safe. So calling the suicide prevention hotline uh, for people here in the States, calling 911 or heading to the nearest emergency room or wherever you're located, just following up with emergency services that are available to you. And, you know, therapists um, throughout, uh, I know for here in the States, uh, there's psychologytoday.com or goodtherapy.org. Those are bo both um, search engines and search platforms to where you can find a therapist in your local area. And, and many, if not all therapists provide some sort of free consultation. Like for myself uh, in California, I provide 15 minute consultations for free. So um, sometimes people, that's that's all they need is just to kind of talk it out and, and see what the options are or, or supports around their area. Um, so I would urge everybody to, to utilize what's around you and just essentially pick up the phone or write an email and connect with somebody to to ask for the help that we may need or or want right now. I think it's important as a community for us as well to like, you know, keep an eye out for people. And, and it, it might be um, beneficial for everyone just to think about, you know, as your community has changed, like, are you still catching up with people? Like, is there someone in your group that might benefit from you reaching out and just being like, hey, man, like, how you doing? We haven't talked in a while. Like, what do you think of the latest release of uh, Cad Bane for Star Wars Legion or something like mm -hmm, that? Mm -hmm. um, so maybe, you know, something to keep on all of our minds. I do want to say, as I was sort of uh, stalking you a little bit here, trying to find out <laughs> information about your background, uh, Psychology Today is actually a really amazing website. Um, and it, you have like your whole bio up there, but it, it mm -hmm. seems to be a great website for uh as you already spoke to for, for finding psychologists or therapists. And yeah, I think, you know, I think, I don't know, it's just like, it's such an important topic. Um, and, you know, honestly, I'm just really appreciative of uh, that. I came across your video and that you are making content like that. I don't know. I think it's, it is a daunting thing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I definitely think is, you know, if maybe gaming has a stigma, I feel like maybe, therapy has its own stigma where it's like maybe even more personal because it's like about you like is there something wrong mm -hmm. with you is it not normal mm -hmm. 
Um, and I think even just thinking about how you were talking about it as skills and, you know, kind of improving that, that, that makes a lot of sense. So, you know, thank you for making our content. And if people are listening, you know, please go check out uh, his YouTube channel. The gaming video will definitely be featured in the notes. Uh, but you want to check out, you know, just poke around. There's a lot of great stuff there. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just want to say thank you so much for coming on to talk about this topic. I'm looking forward to like the one disappointing thing is that because your YouTube channel is a professional channel, like I'm like, oh, I want to have like a hobby update. Like I want to see where your miniatures are. <laughs> but maybe I'll just bother you in a few weeks or months and be like, <laughs> okay, what's stuff looking like? How's your stuff getting painted? I saw that your speeder bikes there and everything. So um, I'll definitely be, I'll definitely be in touch. Um, but, you know, and also thank you so much for coming on. And I know we had some technical stuff and, and kind of re getting this recording going on, on Zoom this time uh, is greatly appreciated. Yeah, my pleasure. I, I appreciate being here and uh, appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. And I think that, you know, that speaks volumes for, for you um, with, with your channel and your audience, you know, that, that you care, right? You're just providing alternative options and and important information for your audience so i appreciate that of you thank you so much and uh you know if you're in southern california maybe you'll uh maybe you'll see uh, gabriel at a, a store playing legion or something or maybe marvel <laughs> crisis protocol but in the meantime we hope you get your miniatures on the table